Welcome back, channel Bite the Wall. Just when you thought the dust was starting to settle in the US-China tech war, Huawei goes and drops an absolute bombshell. This is huge. The Huawei Pura 80 series just got a major update, and what popped up on the screen? The Kirin 9020 processor. This is the official public return of the Kirin chip. It's a massive step in rebuilding their sanction supply chain, and it's a huge tell that the upcoming Mate 80 series might be packing some even more serious heat. So buckle up, the king is back, and we need to talk about what this means for everyone. Just a few days ago, users of Huawei's new Pura 80 series woke up, updated their phones, and saw something they haven't seen in a long, brutal five years. Right there in the settings, plain as day, Huawei Kirin 9020. Now, that might seem like a small line of text, but this is the first time since the legendary Kirin 9000 back in 2020 that Huawei has proactively and publicly slapped a flagship chip model number right in its main interface. This isn't just a technical comeback, folks. This is a shot across the bow. Huawei is confidently declaring to the world, we've found a way around your sanctions. The Kirin is officially back. And this deliberate update reveals a much deeper technological breakthrough. We're hearing the Kirin 9020 features fully self-developed CPU cores, big, medium, and small, and a brand new self-developed small core architecture. On top of that, the CPU frequency has been cranked way up. What does that tell us? It tells us that Huawei's chip design teams haven't just been sitting on their hands. Instead of stagnating under the blockade, they've been innovating like their lives depended on it using architectural genius to squeeze incredible performance out of the domestic manufacturing processes they have access to. To really get why this is such a BFD, a big freaking deal, we have to zoom out and look at the bigger picture, the brutal tug of war between the global smartphone market and raw geopolitics. Recent data from IDC showed global smartphone shipments are up 1.4% year over year. But here's the killer stat. Look at the top five vendors in the massive Chinese market. You've got Huawei, Vivo, Oppo, Xiaomi, and Apple. For the first time in four years, Huawei is back at number one on its home turf. And notice anything else. Out of the top five, Apple is the only foreign company. This itself is a fascinating geopolitical signal. It's clear evidence that in the face of immense external pressure, consumer loyalty in China is undergoing a tectonic shift. Local brands are winning back trust and the market share of Western tech giants is steadily being chipped away. This hardware comeback, this return of the king, is happening in perfect lockstep with the rise of their Harmony OS ecosystem on the software side. This is a classic one-two punch, one on the software front, one on the hardware front. At the same time all this is happening with the hardware, Huawei's Harmony OS is pulling off its own miracle at a breakneck pace. On July 30th, Huawei officially announced that the number of devices running Harmony OS Blue passed the 100 million mark. Think about that. They went from the struggle of getting their first million users to over 100 million. As a senior Huawei exec put it recently, 100 million devices is the line of life and death for an operating system. It means you've crossed the survival threshold. It means Harmony OS has solid footing and can build a real, vibrant ecosystem. It proves Harmony is no longer just a plan B. It's a true primary operating system. And they're not deaf to criticism. Responding to user feedback, the executive didn't mince words. Crashes, lags, our version iterations will quickly resolve these issues. WeChat location sharing is in the works and will be online very soon. Various phone models are being upgraded one after another. And after the upgrade, you'll find they are smoother, more fluid. He flat out said the company, is one that definitely listens to feedback. We hope to turn everyone's hopes and expectations into a wonderful experience. He then confidently said that as the ecosystem matures, Harmony could become a major global player. The brand slogan for Huawei's consumer business is make it possible, turning the impossible into possible and turning uncertainty into certainty. And this isn't just talk. Harmony's partners are putting their money where their mouth is. China Railways 12306 app, the entire Alibaba e-commerce suite, Taba, Tmall, Xinyu, and over 50 apps from Tencent have all committed to native Harmony versions. These are heavyweights, and they're breathing life into this ecosystem. This is a home field advantage you just can't replicate anywhere else. If Harmony OS is Huawei's soul, then the Kirin chip is its heart. And to understand the weight of its return today, 
you have to understand its origin story. It has been a story of grit, ambition, and a whole lot of struggle. Back in 2009, at the dawn of the smartphone era, Huawei was a telecom equipment company. As the iPhone and Android were changing the world, they made a bet the company decision. We're going to build our own chips. The first attempt, the K3V1, was pretty backward by today's standards. But its real value wasn't performance. It was Huawei's first step from being a systems integrator to a chip designer. Listen to what one of their leaders said back then. I will give you $400 million a year for R&D, and I will give you 20,000 people. We must stand on our own feet and reduce our dependence on the United States. Those words are practically echoing through the halls of Washington today. Three years later, the K3V2 was their first truly viable chip, powering their high-end phones and proving they could compete. These early chips weren't heroes, but they were the painful first steps, the building blocks that made everything else possible, the breakthrough from nothing to something. In 2013, the Kirin brand was officially born. From the 910 integrating its own baseband, to the 950 on an advanced 16 nanometers process, to the 960 with financial grade security, Kirin made the leap from usable to good. Then came the golden age, in 2017, the Kirin 970 was the first with a dedicated AI unit, the NPU. In 2018, the Kirin 980 was the world's first commercial 7 nanometers chip. And in 2019, the Kirin 995G was the first flagship to integrate a 5G baseband, giving them a massive lead. Kirin was a world-class leader in AI and 5G. They were at the top of their game, and just as they reached the summit, the floor fell out from under them. In May 2019, the U.S. government put Huawei on the entity list. In May 2020, the sanctions escalated, effectively cutting them off from any foundry using American tech. On September 15, their main partner, TSMC, was forced to stop production. This was the beginning of the darkest hour. The Kirin 9000, packing 15.3 billion transistors, was a masterpiece born under siege, but it was what looked like its final masterpiece. The Mate 40 series that carried it became almost impossible to buy. Worse, the blockade on EDA design software made designing new chips a monumental task. Their tech was at its peak, but it was useless. Their phone business was decimated, but they didn't give up. A company leader's words became their mantra. When paths narrow, the brave are the ones who win. Then, in August 2023, the Huawei Mate 60 Pro launched without any fanfare sending shockwaves through the tech world. It was powered by the Kirin 9000S, a chip made by China's own SMIC. This wasn't just a new chip, it was a declaration of independence. Now, in 2024 and 2025, we have the Kirin 9010 and 9020. The 9020 has a 12-core architecture with massive performance gains. Benchmarks suggest its CPU efficiency is on par with a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 from 2022 which used a more advanced manufacturing process, and its GPU is even more efficient than the original Kirin 9000. Through pure design innovation, they've achieved a critical breakthrough on a domestic foundation. And functionally, it integrates 5.5G satellite communications, playing to Huawei's deep telecom roots. The public labeling of Huawei Kirin 9020 on August 15, 2025, is their victory lap. They have blazed their own trail, a path of pure self-reliance. And look, let's be real, they're not at the absolute cutting edge of manufacturing just yet. But they've proven it's possible. They've proven that Washington can't just flip a switch and turn off China's tech ambitions. Mark this date on your calendar, folks, August 15th, 2025. This is one for the history books. After five long years of grinding in the dark, the sword is finally being unsheathed. The Huawei we all remember, the one that was never afraid to innovate and take pride in its tech, is back on its feet. Huawei Kirin 9020 isn't just a model number. It's a banner for China's entire semiconductor industry and its resurgence. The return of Kirin is a victory for Huawei, but it's also a victory for an entire nation's tech ambitions. So, what does this all mean for the big picture, for the tech war between the US and China? That's the billion-dollar question. What kind of impact do you think the dual breakthroughs of Kirin and Harmony OS will have? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going. Thanks for watching. 
If you found this breakdown valuable, hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dives, and I'll see you in the next one.